Welcome to the Arts to Hearts podcast, a show where we take a peek into the hearts and lives of our favorite artists. From running a creative business and practice to mindset, we talk about everything that goes behind into making a life and a career that you adore as an artist. Think of this as your happy hour with your favorite artist in your studio. Hear them share the messy and the wonderful side of creating and living a creative heartfelt life within and outside our studios. As you tune in, be ready to be inspired and encouraged. I'm your host Charaka Rora an artist designer entrepreneur and founder of Arts to Hearts project thank you so much for being here let's jump right in before we get into this episode i quickly want to remind you about a new open call we at arts to hearts have collaborated with i like your work one of our favorite art podcasts and online platforms for arts we have launched a new open call called facade this open call is for mixed media artists yes all mixed media artists for the first time arts to hearts is going to host artists of all genders and we are so excited to be shedding more light on mixed media artists this time the deadline for this open call is 30th of october and we are open to all mixed media artists from any part of the world to submit visit www.arts2heartsproject.com/submit the selected participants of this open call will be a part of an online exhibit hosted on www.arts2heartsproject.com this open call will be guest curated by Erica B Hess the creator and founder of I like your work an artist and curator the selected participants of this exhibit will be a part of an online exhibit hosted on www.arts2heartsproject.com selected participants will also be a part of a documentary on mixed media artists that will be hosted on I like your work and arts to hearts not only that but Erica will also be selecting an artist to be interviewed on i like your work studio visit series so my dear mix media artist this open call is for you it is time that your work gets the recognition and the limelight it deserves the open call ends on 30th of october 2021 so submit now bye hey you guys welcome back to the arts to hearts podcast this is your host charaka rora and i am so excited today because i have a very very amazing guest and i know that today's episode is going to be so much fun because you'll know now and i have erica lisia here on the podcast which has been long time pending i'm so excited that she finally agreed it was a lot of back coming uh, to and so but i have i've caught her caught her here today so welcome to the podcast uh, erica Oh thank you for having me. I'm I'm very grateful to be here. Firstly, I want to say a big thank you because um it's it's truly a pleasure to have you here. I have I have been following your work for so long and I feel like it is it is that moment where I feel like a first full circle moment I have you here. So, okay. Uh just just so that people I'm sure that a lot of people who are listening to this episode already know you who who you are, what you do, but just so, for the sake of it. Can you introduce yourself, who you are, and what you do? Sure. Um, my name is Erica Lee Sears. I am an oil painter from Portland, Oregon. Um, one of my current projects on social media is I make an original piece of work every single day, and I share my journey online. And I'm approaching um, my seventh year. It was because of the birth of my son, and I wanted to stay creative on a daily basis. Um, and it's brought me so many different projects and different gifts. And you know, I'm. super I never thought I would make it this far to be honest. I never thought I would make it past the first week or the first month, let alone like 7 years is so long. 7 years. <laughs> yeah, 7 years, almost 7. Oh my god, that's um, a lot. Yeah. And it it's not like people think like I do these huge paintings now and it's but it didn't start out that way at all. Like I was painting in a sketchbook and I was just yeah, doing like- small work. but i also give myself permission to do small work also like today like where i just if i feel like i just yeah. need to do like sketchbook work i do sketchbook work so yeah i mean yeah. i think people sometimes think that you do like these huge paintings every day and it just it's not like that <laughs> i think that's such a good thing that you've mentioned because sometimes because we want to be in this and i think before we even were recording this we were having this conversation that um however like 
sometimes when you get to to uh, like you know you want to get the professional you want to get too professional you want to get like you know so where you can make a living and support yourself mm-hmm. yeah so everything becomes like a lot more calculated and like you know there's so many pressures that oh like we feel like oh are we not wasting i don't know at least i'm speaking for myself you know am i not am i not wasting my time am i doing going in the right direction or oh, will this be is this good enough and sometimes we just forget to give ourselves the permission that you know we at the end of the day we want to make the work because it it makes us feel happy and at some point if i just want to do something that has nothing to do with you know i don't want to sell that work i just want to maybe scribble and like like you know and it's yeah, it's one of the I hardest totally lessons. am with you i think i'm with you um you know i think okay. you know i think the thing is is like it is very taboo to talk about like how do you make a living with art how do you um are you able to support yourself and then it's like you know as artists we're not allowed to talk about that stuff because it's like oh well you're selling your artwork for money and it's like well i have to well first of all like um you know you put all the love and all the energy and you know you put your soul into making this work but you also have to support yourself and you also like i use really high quality materials so that's really important to me too yeah um yeah and it what's funny is i always thought like oh you know as i get better at my practice and my work you know i'll paint faster and it's like you paint faster but it gets more complicated <laughs> because you know how to make artwork um you know you're you, you can make artwork but it takes just it takes even longer because you know how to make it great you know i have so many questions that i want to ask and there's yeah. so much oh, of course. so much so much that i want to talk to you but <laughs> But let's start from the beginning because that's sure, what first. I love to do. I want to know who you sure. are, and let's let's start with. Can we talk a little bit about you know where were you born? How how were you as a child? How was your you know how was your childhood? Uh, were you a creative child? Um. Well, I was born in Portland, Oregon. As I said earlier, um, I you know I'm the youngest of three, and my parents are creative people, but they're not. Art, like they are not artists like they are not people that would go to an art museum we were talking before like i didn't go to my art museum like my first art museum until yeah. i was in my mid 20s um you know and it kind of changed everything oh for God. me it really did um and it we only have one museum where i live and it's it's great but you know i don't live in like a city where they're like in new york or san francisco where there's museums or galleries everywhere i mean we have a gallery district but it's not like you know la or san francisco or new york for sure um i was always a super yeah. creative kid but i didn't think it was possible to make a living as an artist or pursue art you know my parents are always like well you know you can do it as a back you need you need a, a backup or you have to do something else or it's good to do it on the side or whatever um you know which is totally not true to whoever is listening there are so many different avenues you can go and so many <laughs> different things that you could do to support yourself um you know and you know that should be celebrated yeah. now that you're saying that you did not think and we've also spoken about this what did you think that you would do otherwise what was that what was what were you thinking you were meant to do in your life yeah i worked in finance for like 6 years um you know and the hours were terrible and long i mean like i was working like like during busy seasons like 50 60 hours a week and um you know and i was good at what i did because i felt like i you know really helped people and i really like you know i really help people and so but the hours were really long and i kept thinking to myself it's like you know after you go to college and all do all the stuff and you get your job and i was you know i got married to my you know college boyfriend and i got a house and a mortgage and all the stuff and then you're just like okay then what like now what do i just do this for like 20 30 years and so then i started i started painting and showing my work um you know on the weekends and the evenings that's how i started mhm and when was that um that was like right around i went well i was always like painting and drawing and stuff but i didn't start showing my work it's been about 10 years since i've been showing my work that you know moving from uh, you were like you said you were in finance and now you're a full time artist that really in itself is such such an amazing like example that you've said and i think 
you set a really good example for so many people because um i think being a mother you've been successful you um you have made it, like you know you've shown people that uh, if you're really passionate about something you can you can you can pursue it even alongside you know being a mother or like so many different things uh you also are a self taught painter and you're a brilliant painter which is another really great thing and then like you mentioned that you you were in finance you left that cushion and you, <laughs> you yeah came into this was really have yeah. a kind of a world that how how i mean let's let's talk a little bit about your time in that job and in okay. finance and how sure. did that let you to be here i didn't have any kids at that time i okay. like i didn't um but you have them like, today like, and you're still working yeah but i think Here's the thing is I quit my job when I when I but when I quit my job I didn't have kids and I think sometimes people have a lot of responsibilities to think about like I mean it is really hard to quit like a a steady paycheck when you have a family to support I mean it was me and my husband that's the only reason why I say that and my husband and I what we did was we made a plan for me to quit and I went on a leave of absence from my job for 6 months in order to think about if I really wanted to pursue art full time yeah So I took a leave of absence and then I was you know and then to see if it worked out and I went back for a couple like I went back for like a month and then I'm just like I can't do it. I'm I'm out. Peace. <laughs> like I just couldn't do it. <laughs> This is yeah. it. This is goodbye. And, yeah, I I don't think I could ever see myself going back to be honest. And I think uh it's a, I think one when you say that now it's because you you saw that it was possible. I think a lot of things that triggered for me also when I thought like like we spoke I I also did not have I never th- I never saw that a, an artist in my life still for a very long na- uh, time I I didn't go to the museums I knew nothing about the art world so it was very hard for me to even imagine that you know I could like this is something real that I could do and I think when you left your job in that one month that you realize that uh if you keep at it and you know there's there's still you know you can make this true and that enough that conviction in itself is is enough for us to take that step what do you mm-hmm. think? yes absolutely i mean the thing is is like you can make a plan i mean it doesn't have to be like i'm quitting my job tomorrow i mean it can be like you know in a year or, or like you know save some money um figure out a plan give yourself some time um you can also work on i mean now it's like different because we have you know like social media is such a help for artists now um because when i first started it you know instagram wasn't around then and um or pinterest i think flickr was just happening yeah and i wish i would have gotten that but i didn't flickr Flickr was um like it's like a photo sharing website. It was before Instagram, before Twitter. It was kind of before my I want to say maybe it's the same time around MySpace, but yeah, it was but it was photo sharing. But it was photo sharing, art sharing um and but that was then, you know, and it's like but but the thing that's great about social media is that you can connect with people from around the world, like meeting people like you or meeting collectors yes. or or mm-hmm. people to create of other creative minds to help you and get advice or even get work. Yeah. You know, it's great. Wow. I mean, that is and I think that's why we're even here because of course there's so much of downside when it comes to social media especially now because it's been overdone, overexploited, all of those things and some like there needs to be a healthy boundary with everything, but I don't think a lot of us would have been here had social media not been there because it just removed those barriers to entry it made so many things accessible for people who did not have them in you know immediate to them i did i do not have a community that i feel resonated with you know in my own geography um it was like i wouldn't have been here because because i i don't have the community uh, that i feel resonated with uh, within my own geography and i like like i said There's not where I'm living right now. There's not even one gallery, let alone. And India does not have even have a lot of gallery or museum. It's only it's only within a very very few 
I like it's a very small group. So yeah, thanks to social media, that a lot, a lot has changed. Okay, let's talk about um, let's talk about your uh, your growth. And I know that social media has been um, a very big um, a very big. So social media has had a lot of contribution to your career. And you you are this really raising artist on the internet today that everyone loves your your bath series your tub series um and like all the work that you do also resonates a lot with people first let's talk about the kind of work that you do first let's just talk about that okay um so I paint whatever I want <laughs> um that's the one thing that's kind of fun about making art every day. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's the one thing that's fun about making art every day is that you can make whatever you want. And like, I mean, it might not be the greatest painting or whatever, but you know, it's like, you know, you just get it out and just have fun. And the one thing that's cool about also being creative every day is that you really kind of think about the ideas and the stories that you want to be telling through your artwork, um, which I never thought yeah. that that would be a big piece of why it's really important to me to continue my practice, right? So, um, yeah, so I'm working on, I have a couple of different series I'm currently excited about. Like, I really am into, like, the Bass series, but I'm also really into, um, you know, the lens of our daily lives and what that looks like. Um, yeah. And th I think that's the biggest thread in my work. Okay. Can you now talk about uh, the daily practice that you start, like that you mentioned? That yeah. You picked on well, and what triggered sure. that? Let's talk about what triggered that. Oh, okay. So um, basically my, okay. So when I, I have two children, I have a daughter and a son. And when I was pregnant with my daughter, I was terribly uncreative. I didn't want to be making art. I was miserable. I mean, pre my pregnancy was really hard. Um, I got sick a lot, like the whole time I was pregnant and I didn't want to make art. And so when she was born, I started making art again, but then I got pregnant with my son and I was like, you know, I need to decide, I need to, you know, set a goal for myself because I either need to make art and have it happen for me, or I need to let it go. And so on, um, my son was six weeks old and I started to make an original piece of art every single day. Um, no matter how big or small, like five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, like whatever, whatever I had, it was more about like showing up and thinking about it. And, you know, it didn't have to be like anything major. It could just be like squiggles if I wanted to, or like my cat or whatever, you know, but that's still a commitment. That's still a commitment. It was the gift to myself. I always say that it was the it was my selfish, selfless gift to myself because I had to do it for myself. Um, but it made me, it, it was just such a gift. And then what happened next? Um, what happened next? Um, I just kept making artwork. Um, eventually, you know, ever got into preschool and my, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if blowing up is the right word. Cause I feel like it's been so gradual, you know, everything has been like super like where I just kind of, yeah. Cause you have to just show up to like the thing about making artwork, as you know, is that it's a very humbling practice because you have to show up and make it. It's not that you, you can't fake it. You can't like, just be like, Oh, I made this. You have to actually put in the time and the dedication in order to like, really make some, like make your vision come alive. Um, so yeah, so I just kind of kept making work and I kept, you know, getting excited about ideas and thoughts and, you know, projects kind of came along the way. Um, you know, I was a working artist before I started my daily practice. Um, my artwork's been in like Portlandia and, um, the TV show and some other TV shows because I'm connected. With yeah, some of the I'm connected with some of the curators in my town. Um, but like, you know, it, but this project really changed my life for sure. It just shows you what a little discipline can do for you. <laughs> and I was just going through, uh, your work, uh, your website is called a tiny rocket. Right. You want to talk about that? Why is it called that? 
Okay, so basically, like, it just kind of stuck. I It was right when I was about to quit my job. And my dog, he would, like, do the zoomies. Like, he looked like a little rocket. And so I always thought <laughs> that, like, oh, this this is, like, a mission of me and myself and, like, the universe. And so I thought we were kind of the same. Oh, wow. Yeah. I know it's not the most professional name, but I like it. And I feel like it speaks to what, to me. I love that like name. It's so yeah. empowering. <laughs> I love the yeah. energy of the name. Oh, I was just saying, you know how we feel so small in the universe. Like once we get really out there and I'm sure you, like you're in India and you know, there's so many people and it's funny because like when you're in like yeah. those kind of places, it's like, you can feel so small in a place that's so big. Yeah, that's true. I think that's really true. Mm -hmm. What when I even saw your website, I was very amazed that it, like it's been seven years, and I was seeing you still keep it. Like you, do you like make like a entry every day on your website? So not anymore, but I catch up like a couple of times a month, and I still I need to catch up. But I catch up because what happens if Instagram goes away, or I mean, like what happens if like yeah. social media is going to change and grow and evolve. And I always want a place where I can always see what I've made. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I was very, I, it was very nice to see your work. And like, it just felt that space where you were keeping yourself accountable and sharing your one, one artwork a day. Yeah. Okay. Let's talk about a lot of great things that have happened in the past two years, like a couple of years for you, which of sure. course uh, includes Lana, um, your album cover book cover do you want mm -hmm. to talk about that how did that happen how was mm -hmm. that experience for you it's like a really big project it's such a great accomplishment well she just reached out to me and she said that oh, you know course. yeah she just reached out to me and said that she loved my work and that and we just started talking and um, I didn't believe it was her at first and so you know we facetimed and talked and stuff and then yeah, I know. I didn't believe it. Well, because it's like someone reaches out to you and you're like, really? Are you sure? Um, and then and then um, she's yeah, but she like was like, that happens. <laughs> so, no, she's very sweet, kind, nice, like very hands on. Um, you know, she definitely what I really admire is she's so hands on that she picks out everything and likes everything. Um she's like a really sweet and positive person. Like she's so great. And her team is like super professional and super nice. Um, that project took like a year. So, um, but yeah, oh but, but it was pretty like, she was really easy to work with. <laughs> so, yeah. What do you think has been your biggest challenge when it comes to being um, an artist, especially let's talk about your biggest challenge that you feel your was your biggest challenge being an artist. Um, well, it's changed. Over, it's changed. Time. It's changed over the years, you know, being the biggest challenge. Like, I mean, when I first started showing my work and like want, needed to make a living at what I was doing, I mean, it was like, how do you do that? I mean, it's really, really hard just getting started um, because before I started or when I started, there was no social media. And, you know, a lot of people did tell, didn't help you or, yeah, you know, we were talking about this before. A lot of people don't really help you yeah. get started or, you know, you have to kind of figure out how you want to, you know, navigate this, right? And, or figure out like, you know, what, what, what avenue I want to get into. Because when you first start it, start, you're just like, okay, I just have to show my work and I just sell artwork and that's it. And it's like, no, well, actually... You know, there's a lot of different ways to make a living at what you do. Like you can get into illustration, you can get into surface design, you can get into royalties, licensing, murals, teaching classes, podcasts. I mean, there are so many different avenues um, and figuring that out is probably like the hardest part at the beginning. And, you know, if anyone that's listening is just starting out or just figuring it out, it's like, I always say, try a ton of things. I've tried so many different avenues and so many different things because you have to figure out what resonates with you and your art style and what you like doing, you know, because in a way, you know, we're creative entrepreneurs. Um, you know, nowadays, you know, like my, nowadays I have different problems. Like it's like, you know, I think about, you know, <laughs> like artwork a lot, like, you know, trying to make the best artwork I possibly can every single day. 
um, is hard. And, um, you know, inspiration can be hard too, because, you know, I'm really tough on myself where I just really want to make great work. And then now it's like fitting in everybody and fitting in all the projects, managing myself and the kids and my husband and making sure, you know, I'm a present, you know, mother and a present, you know, wife and things like that. That's what's hard now. It's just different, different problems. Um, you know, and it's always evolving. That's, that's very true, actually. Um, can we also talk about, uh, we also spoke about this before we started recording with, you know, we like, um, you did not come from an art school. Um, you also didn't, firstly, let's say how hard is, how hard was it for you to navigate how, what this world, this art world means? Or someone who especially did not come from a formal training background? Um, it's really hard because, you know, even today, you know, you tell people you're an artist and like, uh-huh, <laughs> you know, they give you that face where it's like, okay. Um, and I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, it, it, and I think, you know, like if, even if you're self-taught, you can't let hold yourself back from that because, um, you know, there is so much to learn about art and, you know, it can, it goes beyond. I mean, I wish I could have gone to art school. Like if I could do it all over again, I would totally go to art school. And then if people ask me like, should I go to art school? And like, it depends. Like if you're really going to learn and really, it's like going to college. If you're really going to learn and experience it and really take it in what they're teaching. And it's not necessarily like their, um, it, it, it's not necessarily like the value, but it's like, what am I learning? And because these are people that are professionals and they're really teaching a skill set um, and giving it to you. Um, so I wish I could, if I could do it, like I said, if I could do it all over again, I would totally do it. Um, <laughs> but at the same time, I feel like it makes me work harder um, where I have to, like, t- I feel like I have to technically yeah. learn things. Like, I feel like I'm never, like, I'm always like learning. And especially, I think, um, you also live in a smaller city. Mm-hmm. Um, we again spoke about that. I also come, I live in a smaller city, especially uh, like uh, right now, especially uh, ever since I've been most active in when it came to be an artist. Mm-hmm. Um, and you did not come from an art school. A, lo- a good thing about art school or any kind of schooling is that it gives you a network. If it gives you yes. a starting point to start, like, you know, yeah. to find people and then just to answer things. And then, you know, knowing how things well, work. How was that for you? How did you figure yeah. out? It's people starting out just like you. So it's yeah. like, it's definitely like a place that you can like collab and network and like what you were saying, meet people, especially in art school. That is like totally a game changer yeah. too. Um, you know, like when I first started out, like before Instagram and stuff, I applied for everything and like all the open calls in my town and like everything. And I was really able to network um, at that time with like curators and people like doing things here. So I was able to like, kind of, you know, get going in that direction. Um, but it's still really hard. Like it's not easy because a lot of people like, especially wow. like at that time, the artists that were making a living weren't like, I always felt like they weren't, sharing their secrets on how to like, how to do it. How are you doing it? You know? And, um, so usually when people talk to me, I always take it like, how can I help? Like, how can I, is there anything I can say to help? Because, you know, like it's not easy. And, um, but there's so many different avenues you can go and so many different ways you can, um, you know, if you're able to like support yourself and like get your artwork. Yeah, that's true. And I think that's, the biggest problem is that, you know, I'll, I'll share a, b- a little bit about sure. when I entered, like when I thought that, okay, this is, uh, this is what I, I thought that this is what I wanted to do. I wanted to be an artist. And so I started, um, you know, meeting people and it was so hard because the kind of ideas that I was, uh, I was being sold was something I really did not want to believe in that, you know, I had to be in the studio for this hour and you know like oh I needed someone I had like I had been I have been on my own since forever I have I come from a background where I had to make an effort 
to do everything on my own and i just did not have a habit of relying on someone to come and give me a chance and it was so hard because i thought like okay i can be successful out as when a curator will pick me or a gallery will pick me or you know i think my biggest inhibition was which is what i want to ask you is um you know this idea that your uh, artist uh, you know treating your art as a business there was a lot of taboo when it came to that that you know um as artists your work your you know it is your work is just creating the work which isn't i i just feel it which isn't 100% true uh, as an as artists especially self representing artists we are also um, creative business creative entrepreneurs creative business owners because uh, if you want to make a living out of it you need to know how to run a business how was how was that learning for you i i'm sure you mentioned you were in finance so i'm sure that would have been working for the six years in in organizations and corporates oh yeah you would have had some sense of how then how did you was that like a major shift did you consider your work Yeah, I'm lucky that way because I am pretty like when it comes to like paperwork and all that stuff, I'm pretty organized and pretty responsible. So, um, you know, I'm I'm lucky that way. Um, but, you know, I think you know, I think all that stuff. I mean, it it's not it does it's not it's like we're entrepreneurs and it doesn't apply like I mean, if you're selling jewelry, if you're selling pottery, if you're not just if, if even if you're like working if you own a salon you have to have a, like a business like side of things um and people don't always associate that with art you know because you have to be such a free thinker with art um but you know like i mean i have a, i have an accountant that helps me <laughs> so i mean i definitely there is places that you can go to like help support yourself um you know in making sure you're staying organized and responsible cuz you know taxes are not fun but it happens. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. <laughs> It's hard because I think of people like us like I hate finance. I am so bad at numbers I can't even tell you. Just like so bad. I'm pretty good. Um uh, but my husband's really good too. Like he's one of those people he could like read a, like look at a receipt and be like, "Oh, it's, you know, 327 or whatever." Like he can add up all the numbers and like he's just like he's like a math guy. Yeah, it makes me kind of jealous but like as like cuz it's kind of his superpower but I mean like I'm I'm glad I don't have that skill at the same time. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I think you have to em- I can't I think if I think you have to embrace that there is a business side and like that there's, you know, I think you have to kind of strip away the shame of it. There's nothing wrong with it because here's the thing and this is the truth is once you start growing your art business and you're dealing with like agents and different kinds of companies and different kinds of um just collectors in general or like um, especially if you're working with like corporations and clients like they are business minded they are going to be giving you a contract to sign you have to understand what you're signing and then you also have to understand what your worth is because you can say like oh i don't know you pay me whatever like no they're going to like try to get you yeah, i mean it's a bit, no, it's yeah. it, it's the business side of stuff um it's it's something that you have to like understand that you want to like you need to learn about negotiating and understand what you're signing um because you know like let's say you're like oh i don't know i don't want to learn business stuff but it's like what happens if they take your artwork and they you know you sign it away you know it's a full you know they have they can do whatever they want with it and you didn't realize that. Um so it's like really important to understand what you're signing. Like I got approached by a really big company and um I ended up turning it down so I won't say their name, but they were like going to use my artwork and they were like changing <laughs> the they were changing the image, slicing it up. You know, they told me like this is what we're going to pay you for it. And um but I actually did the numbers and it was way less because they were paying me in royalties. and i just didn't feel like it was like an honest transaction you know and like and the way they were going to use my image yeah. um so like i think it's really you have to just kind of like okay i'm just going to like embrace this side and i'm just really going to like, yeah. like read through the paperwork and understand everything and you know even if you need like tax help or accountant help there's people to help you or a year end person yeah. that can help you um yeah it's it's 
not yeah. that hard and it's not that fun, but it is a side of know, stuff you have to learn. A hundred percent. And I think another thing that, that's what really I, so for me, the journey was a little different because I came from a business background. I knew a lot of things about business. Then I came to this idea that I don't, oh, I, I want to be an artist and artists, artists are, are not entrepreneurs artists are not business people they're artists so i was sold this idea and because of course i wanted to fit in for a very long time i thought okay i can be either an artist or i can be let's say i can be an entrepreneur but entrepreneurship is in my blood and i think that's why i had the guts to choose being an artist that i did Mm -hmm. not recognize at that point but what what actually pulled me out of that trap was one very simple thing, which was like, you know, what the idea what people was telling me or I was seeing around me was that, oh, you um, like, you know, you have to be uh, this this kind of an artist who sits in in the studio and, um, you know, who does um, like, you know, or that, you know, a gallery picks or who's not like literally putting themselves so much out there and that who needs to be like, you know, that. You don't need to be commercial and all of those things. Where I understand there's there's a boundary for everything and everyone finds their own comfort zone. But for me, the most important thing was that if I want to, I want to be creative every single day and I have my bills to pay. Yeah. And if I want to keep doing this, I yeah. need to figure out a way that makes me, uh, gives me enough so that I can still get up every morning and I can go to the studio and if I want to, paint and draw I can do that because I know that I can pay my bills and I was Mm -hmm. like this idea is now going to let me do that so Mm let's let me try what works for me what I believe in and I think that changed so many things a lot of things started making sense a lot of things um started like it made so much sense to me that yeah what I'm doing has value what um you know what I mean Oh yeah, I totally, it's like, um, well, you want to be, I think you have to think about like, what are your, what is in your soul about what you want to be doing, you know, with your stuff? Like, like for me, like I love being creative every day and I love having, you know, painting and I love being able to like paint whatever I want, like not all the time because I'm like pretty busy with projects, but for the most part I can like get, I can have new ideas and new things coming and stuff like that. That's super um, important to me. Um, But I think the whole like making a living and paying your bills, it comes with experimenting and trying new avenues. Like, you know, if you want to teach, if you want to do workshops, if you want to, I mean, there's so many murals um, are pretty, you know, pretty good change. You know, it's like, yeah, there's a ton of different ways, but it's like a lot of people don't understand how to get started or how, um, how do you just like see your artwork, like, where do you want to go with it? You know? Um, but there's plenty of avenues. (laughs) Okay. One, one last question. And then the exciting part of the episode, which is is, what do you think it was? Can you maybe share, even if you look back, what was that one, maybe mindset change or like that, you know, that one trigger, of course, there's never one. It's always a series of events. But mm-hmm. there is one that you feel like, okay, um, it really pull, like pushed things off for you, snowball things for you, and really, really changed a lot of things for you before, you know, you felt like things were working out for you. What was that one thing that you feel was very instrumental? Okay, probably the very, okay, so back when I worked at the bank, when I worked in finance, um, one of my birthdays, Um, I had a friend who was like creative entrepreneur. Also, she was, um, a choreographer dancer. And so we would get together and just talk about how much we wanted to quit our jobs and how much we want and how do we do that? Right. And so for my birthday, my husband gave her the key to our place and in our empty room, she bought me an easel and she filled the room up with balloons. Um, yeah. And I never had anyone really believe in my artwork that much before. I mean, my husband's supportive. He's like, sure, make art, whatever. Like, especially when I first started, but she was like, yeah, this is it. This is what you're doing. Yeah. Oh my God. That's so special. I think a lot of times, uh, we definitely do believe in ourselves, but, um, 
some the real support someone who really is there for you and just even we are never good enough i mean whenever anyone who's starting out uh you start somewhere mm-hmm. but it is those early people who still believe in where you can be that their belief uh that nudge in the That's beginning true. is so important it's it's the people that get it it's that it's the because you realize like what's funny is is like you realize how many people don't understand what you do including like family members or friends and stuff like there's so many people that just don't get it and so and i think the other thing that is is once you release that and just be like i'm okay if you know my mom or my dad or my friend isn't going to understand what i do it's like really freeing and it lets you really be your more of your true self i'm saying even that i mean that that acceptance is also really hard to know mm-hmm. that the people and we all need validation but only to some extent of course i always say that we don't need but of course we need not validation but i think support the right word is support even if when people don't believe in you even when they say that you can still do it i think even then even that matters it's very hard it's very hard to um you know when everyone says you can't do something and then the only person that says that you can do something is the person inside your soul you know it's like it's hard it's like really really hard 100 amazing thank you erica yeah. that has oh. been so amazing you've been so kind yeah. and wonderful i am so excited uh, to come to the most like the favorite part of the episode that i also mentioned which is the rapid fire uh, i'm going to ask you a set of questions these are really fun questions you have to just give me what comes to your mind first of course no right and no wrong that is uh it's just we want to know what comes to your mind okay okay are you ready i'm ready one okay. thing you want to convey through your work in the art one thing that i want to convey with my work in the art um i don't really think about it like that i feel like i just have to let it out and i just let whatever comes out happen What's that one word that describes you the best? Oh man, I don't know. Um laughter. Really? You did not laugh so much. You're wild. Oh, la- uh, laughing is like my favorite thing in the world. <laughs> If you could have a studio anywhere in the world, where would it be? Paris. Really? Oh yeah. Wow. Or Bali. But Bali like I feel like is like would be harder oh. to ship things or get things like like out <laughs> you've really thought, thought this through yeah no bali and paris are my magic places amazing your biggest source of inspiration myself that sounds really self that sounds really ego but myself oh. cuz everything you have is within you know everything is there love that okay this is a question i told you when we were even talking which is the next question the, your age when you visited a museum for the first time i think i was 25 i want to say i was 25 why i i i purposely added this this question to um to my uh list of rapid fire because i feel like sometimes we take things for so much granted that we feel like oh because people think okay this is a successful artist or because they come from this background or they go to these art worlds to these museums and all of that but not everyone there's not one kind of thing that happens a lot of us who did not have access or who still don't or like you know who maybe some people would choose not to do that are still you're still there you went to the museum for the first time while you were 25 and here you are doing so good so i feel like we still need to open that thought that not everyone is that like museum goer kind of a thing and is can still be successful yes i mean it's i mean anything is possible you know like i mean i never thought any of this stuff would happen to me like ever but you made it you worked for it Well, I don't know. I never think I make it. I always think I'm just kind of evolving and growing and um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen next. Yeah. No, I think the, of course there there we all want to be like, you know, wherever we want to be. But I think you have come 7 years ahead in your commitment, which is something that shows that it can take you even farther. And that is that is, that in itself is a success. Yes. it is i mean i just i never thought i would make it this far so it's like i kind of feel like you know i live in the moment and but i also think about like i think what's really cool is if i had to give someone advice um is you know i would probably say like make sure you're dreaming big enough because 
you know, when you first start out, you just think about like, okay, like how do I show my artwork? How do I sell my artwork? How do I get it out there? But I think, you know, if I could give my younger self a little advice would be to like dream even bigger because those are important things to think about. But I think a lot of people dream so small when the world is so big. Yeah. Oh, love that advice. Love that advice. Uh Who is your favorite women artist? Okay. My favorite is Alice Neal. Like she is amazing. Um, Oh, I love her work. I know. I wanted to name my daughter Alice, but I didn't. I really wanted to like her. What I love about her, I love her so much. I watched her documentary and she talks about being a mother and her kids talk about how she is as a mother. And the one thing that always, I always like that really resonated with me was that she said in the documentary that, you know, you could be whatever you want to be, you know, just let me know and we'll figure it out. (laughs) And I just love that. And I felt like I always hoped that I could encompass that as a mother, um, you know, and she made work like a really long time throughout the decades. And, you know, she just paint, she definitely had the technical chops, but she painted what she felt. Um, yeah. So, um, I have so many favorite women artists that are living today. Like I love Ashley Longshore. Um, she's amazing. (laughs) I love her so much, you know? Um, yes, definitely. Yeah. The kind of courage she has is like, I think, Oh my God. The energy she she has is just out of this world. Well, I her book is amazing. Like I highly recommend reading it. Um, and I love that she just doesn't give. Like she doesn't care. But at the same time, she's a really smart like artist, like business owner. But like I just like I think what I appreciate the most is how creative she is and just like the way she thinks about things and how she sees the world. Like it's amazing. She also she also bought a couple of my artworks too. Really? Yeah. Amazing. She, that yeah. She has a beautiful yeah. collection. She really does. Yeah. Oh, I was honored. I when I found out she bought she's bought a few pieces and I like <laughs> was freaking out and I was running around and I was like, I can't believe it. <laughs> of I, course. Just, I couldn't believe it at all. Yay. Congratulations. Love that. Okay. My next question. Who is your go-to person when you're in need of uh, advice or you're in trouble? Um, I think it depends on what it is. Like it's usually like my husband is like a good sounding board. Um, when I'm trying to like figure out like an issue or a problem or like I think what's tough as an artist is like, what's really hard is the negotiation part. Like when you get like the contracts and the kind of get into that tier of client, um, because you have to like read it through and you have to kind of go back and forth and make sure it all sounds good and right. And if it all makes sense. Um, but yeah, him or, you know, I'm lucky because I've always had like a really good connection to like different art groups. Like, um, I know that you're in like art Queens with cat, which is super great. I'm also in a few other little groups. Um, it is, if you're starting out, like definitely look to connect with like, there's so many great online groups, but you can also like make one in your community or your friends or things like that. Yeah. I think it's a great way. It's such a great way if you find if you find people uh, with similar mindset, and if you work together with them, it's such a such a beautiful, healthy way to grow. And it's such it's also a way that helps you grow faster because you're not alone. Yes, it is. It's true. And then you can ask like advice. Or, um, you know, if you have questions about like this kind of thing or that kind of thing, or like if you're like getting into, you know, selling at art fairs, like, how do I do that? What kind of setup do you, does anyone use? Or, um, you know, like I'm doing this mural and I need help with figuring out how to project the image. How do I do that? So it's a great place to get like some advice and kind of get to the next place. Uh, Okay, this could be a little more than what has been your favorite? Can you share like one? I'm sure there must have been many, but one favorite moment that um, you would like that your favorite moment and you feel so grateful to be an artist that you chose to do is one moment Um, that's very important and precious for you. Oh, I have I have a a lot and it, it usually will surprise people when I say it, but probably like there's been a couple um. But when you finish a painting 
and it's exactly how you wanted it to be and more. And you are able to get some of that magic into what you're making. And, um, you know, like that is the hardest part about making art is when, you know, you have the happy accident of yes, something absolutely. amazing. Um, and it doesn't happen very often. I mean, it happens, yeah. but it's like when it's truly special to your soul, yeah. you know, and I've kept a few pieces that I can't yeah. let go of. Love that. I think that's really true. And I think mm -hmm. another thing that I really feel is feel extremely like I don't have this. I, this does not happen to me too often anymore because I think I've been having a really, really hard time right now. Mm -hmm. The past of all of us, apart from in the past two years. But you know, that state, that state, that state that that eternal space that you go into when you're either painting or you're creating something that you lose sense of time you lose sense of space and everything and you feel like you're you're completely in a different world and you disconnect from your reality i think that whenever that happens it's just so so beautiful mm -hmm. your flow if you were to meet younger erica today what advice would you give her um, I would probably, it sounds cheesy, but I would just say, you know, everything you have was, is within you and you have to like believe in yourself. And it's also about letting go, you know, like letting go with not just your artwork, but letting go of like what people think and just letting go of like relationships that don't matter, you know? And I don't mean relationships like, oh, I don't need to talk to you, but just kind of letting go that negativity, letting go where people don't understand. I think that one of the biggest game changers for me when I was young was realizing that there are people that n are never, ever, ever going to understand what you do. And that's 100% okay. You know, that doesn't mean you love them any less. Um, it just means they just don't get it. And that's okay. And I think once I really changed that, you know, then I was able to be more free. Yeah, I love that advice, actually. It's not only to yourself. I think a, a lot of us, all of us would take that advice for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Shout out to an artist uh, who's currently on your heart list slash you're loving. Okay. Um, uh, Like I'm loving, there's a few. I, I'm loving August Wren right now. Um, And um, Sam Baker and um, Gail Kabaker. Wow, I am going to check those out and I'm going to also link them in the show notes. Yeah, no, they're super great and they're super sweet. <laughs> Thank you. This is just one simple, it is for, especially for people who are listening to this episode, is as a woman entrepreneur, especially as a woman artist and creative entrepreneur, what is that one, one advice, especially in, in, let's say, two words that you can give to people coming behind you? Um, trust your gut, you know, especially as a woman, trust your gut. And um, just because someone gives you advice doesn't mean it's true, you know, um, because like, I mean, I've been given a lot, a lot of advice, a lot of like advice, even from people that are like our established artists, you know, <laughs> and it might not be coming from the right place, you know, but at the end of the day, trust your gut, you're powerful, you know, like it's not a boys club you know, it's a woman's club. No, it's an anybody club, really. Um, I just think, I, I think you have to not be afraid to uh, stick up for yourself and um, be in charge of your career and what you're doing. Be a boss, you know? I love that advice so much. I can't even tell you. Love that. Okay, Erica. Thank you so much. Thank. I can't even, I am so grateful to have you. I had such a great time and it's truly, truly a pleasure I have been listening to you for so long and it feels, I, I, I just feel so grateful today to have you here because it truly is an honor to speak to you here and to have you share your journey with me and our audience and our community. Um, one last thing, which is what I want to ask you is if you have anything like a new project that you can maybe, anything that's, that's coming up and nobody knows that you want to share with us or anything else, can you share that with us? And where can people who are listening that this episode, where can they find you, support you? Sure. Yeah, that's it. Um, well, on my socials, it's just Erica Lee Sears. That's where you can find me. Um, you know, don't hesitate to reach out. Send me a note. I'm available or email. Um, and I'll do my best um, to respond in a timely manner. <laughs> um, 
But um, like um, I have a bunch of really cool projects coming up, like super cool. I'm under NDA for a lot of stuff and there, but there's a big surprise coming in December. Um, I can't talk about it yet, but it's coming and I cannot wait to have the announcement because it's like definitely like probably one of the biggest things in my career. Really? I am yeah. more excited now. I really yeah, <laughs> I can't wait to hear what's yeah. happening. I'm I'm working on it right now. And it's just like, I, yeah, I just have to, get, I'm getting all the pieces together. Yeah. It's actually, I think the date is December 16th, but I'm announcing it early December. So, yeah. Please, whenever you're ready, when you feel, make sure you send us all oh, details. Of course. And, we, and I want to make it. sure we make a big deal out of it. Oh, of course. Yes. We need to make a big deal yeah, out of this. We will be here sharing for you, rooting for you, and oh, supporting you, you so much. in a best yeah. capacity. Oh. So we'll catch up your daily painting on Instagram every day. Oh, absolutely. That's, That's how you can find me for sure. Perfect. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having here. And I really... Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. You can find all the details and links mentioned in the show notes of this episode available on www.arts2heartsproject.com. And if you like this episode, please don't forget to tag us in your stories and leave us a review here on iTunes or any of your favorite platforms. It really helps us to keep the show going. Thank you so much. I'm sending you lots of love and I can't wait to be back here soon again. Bye.